All righty. Hey, everyone. Just uh, for those coming in, just hit a like and make a comment. Let me see you in here. Let me see who's in here. We, uh, we're we just going to talk Zippos tonight. And uh, the 2024 Collectible of the Year. See, uh, I want to see what folks, what y'all's opinion on this one is. So as you come in here, let me know. Let me know in the comments when you come on in. All right. Hey, Backwoodsman. Hey, Tom. So also, I had a care package the other day, and I uh, had a, a few few neat things come in. So that's kind of what uh, what's being displayed here. I don't know where that Zippo I got went to. Here it is. We got this Zippo in as well. It's a hundred anniversary of the Bradford City Fire Department. So pretty uh pretty neat Zippo. One eleven out of one fifty. So that was a uh, just a very uh kind care package I got in. Try to get some more folks in here. Usually I uh let folks know when I'm going live, but I just was bored and was like, you know what, let me just as backwoodsman said, let me just fire it up and see see what's going on. So got five folks in here. Just make sure to hit that like button. Also, comment. More comments we get, the more uh, gives me a little bit more to talk about. So, hey, Gavin. There's Gavin and Mike. Yeah, so uh, the Titan spread, I'll, I'll be saying this uh, here in a little bit, uh, had a subscriber, had a fan send me a care package, a really nice care package. And uh, in there, he had a Tennessee Titans flag. I'm a Titans fan. I got my Titan Zippo set up over there. Also had me a uh, Titan game chair here. So I I'm a Titans fan, so he knew exactly what to get me. So that was uh, really nice of that subscriber. Gave me a Titans flag. Uh, he sent me uh, this... Uh, Front knife, I love this knife. I mean, uh, as far as cutting boxes and stuff, this is got to be my favorite knife. I got to sharp, sharpen it up a little bit, but I mean, what a cool, what a cool gift. Uh, it, this is legal in my state. So for those that, you know, I, I know it's illegal in some states, but my state, it's a legal knife. He sent me this uh, diary. Really neat diary. Uh, it's the executive diary. And in here, it's pretty much like a uh, directory and also a planner. Uh, so he has some old Zippo employees from the uh, from the late 90s. Uh, I have a couple other ones, but uh, I actually met her in Bradford, uh, Miss Linda. But so he sent me this cool Zippo diary. Sent me this cool Zippo, uh, Bradford, 100th anniversary, 111 out of 150. So I, he he sent me, he he hit the spot on this, uh, on this care package. It's the second one he sent me, so I'm really, really thankful. He sent me this uh, tool, these pliers. I think he used these to tighten the hinges or something like that. So he wanted me to try those out. But uh, but yeah, I mean he he hooked me up, and I I, I sent him something uh, before I knew he was sending me something. I had something already in the mail for him. So, um, so hey Tony, greetings from Pennsylvania. Hey there. Now Tony, uh, I I know you're kind of looking at 
collectibles of the year. This is a pretty good one for 2024. So I got the 2023 back here. I, I got a few extra of these too. Um, but yeah, I figured we'd chat about the 2024 collectible of the year. Um, so uh, yeah, that, Gavin, less than 10 away from 2K subscribers. I've, I really, I've been, uh, been a little busy lately, so I haven't really pushed anything. I knew 2000 was coming up, but uh, uh, the other day I looked and I was like 15 away, so or so, something like that. So getting close to 2K. Haven't really had any big videos lately either, so uh, slow growing, but hey, I still still enjoy it. And then uh, Thomas, I do have bad news. So like Tony and everybody else that uh, you know that that I've seen in at Lighter Palooza, I will not be going this year. And just you know, one, it's still too far away to really determine anything, uh, but also I just. You know, it's not not the right time for me to go. Unfortunately, I would love to go, but I just got got some things going on that uh, just not not the best decision to go to Bradford this year. So, I wish uh, wish I was closer. If I was, you know, if I was about ten hours closer to Pennsylvania then yes, I would definitely be there. But uh, no, nah, it's just too far, too expensive to get there. Um, so maybe next year. We'll see. So Slacker, there's Bobby Joe. I bet you how ironic it is for him to be calling me a slacker when he's probably on the clock right now watching youtube so welcome baba joe haven't talked to you in a while anyway and yes gavin family always wins wouldn't have it any other way but you know i mean zippos have to come close right i mean that zippos do do <laughs> it wasn't a tough to or it wasn't an easy decision just to kind of back off from trying to figure out if we were uh if I was going to Bradford or not it did I did have to think about it long and hard but but yeah so uh, tonight I was just kind of bored I haven't really talked a, a lot about uh Zippo's to anyone lately so I just figured throw up a live and see where it goes I know the big talk of the community right now is the collectible of the year. I've seen some good reviews on it. I've seen some not so good reviews. So, I mean, I, what do y'all think? I think it's a nice lighter. You know, I try not to bash Zippo or anything or uh, talk bad. I try to give my honest opinion on it, but I mean, it's, for a collectible of the year, it's better than some of them, that's for sure. Um, but I've just been, uh, as far as expressing expressing myself, I, I, I don't find it serving to Zippo in a positive manner to bash them at every turn like I see other others do. So I figured if Zippo's the only content that I provide, that's the last thing I need to bash. So, uh, I mean, I, I like it. It's a good, uh, it's a good design. I think. I, I just think there might have been some. You know, it's a black mat. It's kind of a basic finish, but I, I do think they really bring it out and. kind of upscale that black mat a little that they don't have any black mats that look like this so i mean the concept i really like the concept of this zippo if you haven't seen my review you know there's three there's three design concepts that do go into this lighter uh and they're all 
You know, it's like the 50th anniversary of Venetian. Then you got the 40th anniversary of the Black Mat. Then you got the 20th anniversary of the uh, multi, uh, the deep carve engraving. So, I mean, there, there are some neat concepts in this. Hey, Baz. There's Terry. Hey, Terry. Uh, I think it looks cool holding off getting it for a month or two. Having too much fun finding vintage Zippos lately. Yeah. I, uh, I really haven't, uh, other than this and, you know, some uh, care packages, I really haven't been getting too many zippos in lately uh, i've been cleaning cleaning a bunch i got my workstation over there been cleaning a lot of zippos out uh, but i do have a couple things in the works uh hopefully i'm uh i'll be acquiring a uh collection hopefully here in the next week or so from somebody who uh, a very very generous. They're getting out of the collecting game, and uh, hopefully uh, we can make something work uh, to get that deal. So, Let's see. Am I still live here? I think uh, I'm having... One of my phones is not acting right here. All right, there we go. But now for... Uh, I know like for the European, I think it's like all black. For the Asian, I think it's the same, but a different insert. Um, I'm, I went hard, uh, hardcore to get the 90th. For all three regions and uh, the uh, Art Deco one with all three regions. But last year, uh, I, I didn't go after those. I, I just went with the American version. And then uh, just going for the American version on the uh, 2024. It's just, it's way too expensive. And also just it, it can be a little stressful trying to figure out how to get all three regions together. Um, so, Gavin, the color black hides detail for me might be my vision too. I mean, it is kind of, you know, it, it's kind of hard to see a little bit. But I like for everyday carry, this would be a really sick. EDC, like, I mean, talking about a really classy looking everyday carry, this would be it. And, and I say that because my everyday carry is a black mat. And I think black mat is one of the best finishes when it comes to everyday carry, just because of the durability of a black mat is probably the best finish when it, you know, comes to, if you drop something, you know, I've had this on me, let's see, no, wrong, this is a 2016, I have a, uh, let's see, I got my original one over here somewhere, here it is, so this is one of my first Zippos, and I've been carrying it since 2009, I bought it straight from the shop, and I mean, there's some dents and, uh, you know, chips in it, but other than that, I mean, it's a, it has held up pretty well for you know me carrying it almost every single day for the past what's that now um, fifteen years. So this is a uh, black mat is a really good finish, and now I think five forties are my favorite uh, finish for EDCs. But this uh, twenty twenty four collectible of the year that would be a really good EDC if you want to drop that kind of money to be carrying around in your pocket. So, 03 Scrolling Storm. I know 
What? I can picture that design in my head. I'm trying to think if I have any in my collection. I've had that. I've had that design in my collection before, but I think I maybe gotten rid of it. But that that that's a cool. Uh, That's a cool design. Let's see. And then here, uh, I do think they they do the Venetian justice in this one. That's for sure. You know, I mean, it, it's a uh, Chuck Riley. Uh, uh, one of his one of his customers did put it. I think the best way. It is a great modern take on a classic, and I think it did get that right. It's a it's a modern take on a classic. Now, whether it's collectible of the year worthy, I mean, I'm, I think it is just in the concepts, uh, just the concepts that they use. Uh, it is a very well thought out design and whoever did it did a good job. It just, uh, I don't know. I think I was expecting a, a little, little bit more for a collectible of the year, uh, especially with the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, I know a lot of people were kind of anticipating that as a potential Cody. So, I don't know what y'all think. Any more thoughts on the uh, 2024 collectible of the year? Anything y'all want to see? Like I said, I, I really ain't got a, got a plan for tonight. Just wanted to come on and say hey and... Talk about some Zippos and also show off my cool uh, care package stuff. Uh, this Tennessee Titans flag. This awesome knife. Uh, cutting boxes and stuff. I wish I've had this knife, you know, a while back. It is a sweet little knife. So uh, the let's see, uh, Baz the uh, EDC is a brass four horsemen of the apocalypse, a retired thirty two cam uh, camel replica. After many years of use, that's good. Uh, good EDC, and then uh, now uh, Gavin. So the past, I would say the past four Cody's have come out around this time. Uh, this one is a little earlier. Uh, they've, so last year it came out around May, May or April, uh, the year before that, the 90th came out a couple weeks before, uh, July. So I know that because, uh, we, I was at the 90th anniversary, uh, event in Bradford and they had just come out with the Cody's like a week or two before because, when we all went to Bradford, we were all exchanging. Uh, we had some friends come over from Europe, and so we were trading American collectible of the years for European collectible of the years. Uh, those came out a little earlier, but we were afraid that the American version wouldn't, <laughs> wasn't going to come out in time. So uh, those came out about July. So they, the past four years... The Cody's have come out between late March and early July. And now I now I I wasn't really active before 2019. Uh, I kind of took a break for a few years. So I, I don't really recall when those came out. I remember I was active when the 2013 collectible of the year came out. And it came out in November. Uh, and in 2013, they came out in a, with the collectible of the year. But they didn't come out with the collectible of the year in 2014. Uh, and I think that's because they you know, came out with that 2013 so late in the year. So... Let's see, Bobby Joe, I personally think it would look better with the black and gold insert instead of the brass one. Yeah, see, I 
I think that would have looked sick. You know, just had the... Uh, I, I don't know how that black on black would look uh, with the case. But having that black insert they did for the copper and then with the engraving in there, I I think that would be sweet. Uh, I don't know what they did for the Asian one. I know the insert's different, but I, I really, really didn't pay attention to that one. So, but yeah, I think that would have been cool. And then uh, Baz has a, a U.S. Cody ordered and coming from a bloke in the UK. Well, I hope you're getting a good deal on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know who you're getting it from, so I know they provide a good service. Um, I will say, uh, let, let's see, let me get on Zippo Australia real quick. So I've always said this, you know, Baz, Jamie, Seth, uh, I got some uh, pretty good friends in the uh, in Australia or you know Baz in New Zealand they have all my respect because it is you know you think it's hard collecting Zippos down here in the south because they don't pop up very often but now in Australia they got it tough so I appreciate and respect my friends in Zippo Australia. Um, I'm trying to pull up the website right here and show you how much their collectible of the year is. I think that they have access to the Asian one, but their prices are always, always high. There we go. All right. Let's see if y'all can see. We'll go to, I don't see it on the front page. Is it not out yet? Let's see. I guess it's not out yet. Baz, is uh, is the uh, 2024 collectible of the year not out on uh, Australian website yet? I guess not. Let's see. Let's pull up uh, Zippo UK. So here's uh, on UK. In the UK it is. So here is the 2024 collectible of the year in the UK. Hopefully you don't see it well. Uh, let's see. This one... This one's on tumbled chrome, so uh, the U.S. is on tumbled brass. I like that a little better uh, than this one. And then the insert is chrome, and that is 209 pounds, which I don't get into prices because I know with du duty tax and uh, there's all sorts of things that, you know, Zippo has to jack their prices up big time in the UK just because of those duty taxes. So I'm not going into that conversation. Uh, but 209 pounds probably comes out to, what, like $250? Uh, let's see. 209 pounds. Let's see. 209 pounds sterling to US dollar. $268. So cl close. So to get one from the UK, if you just went solely off the UK website, to get a European collectible of the year region edition from the UK, it's going to cost you after tax, after uh, after shipping, uh, all those things. Say if uh, you had somebody in the UK and you said, hey, buy one of these off the UK website. Uh, they'll ship it to you. That's about $20, $25. Then to pay them would be, you know, with the conversion fees through PayPal, that adds on another $20 or $30. So you'll be paying about $300 US for this 
European region, uh, Zippo. And that's kind of why I'm not going after this because uh, I you know, I got this from Riley66, so he has very good prices. Uh, so you're talking you know, retail here in America, you can get this for about 120 right now. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm not spending $300 to get the other regions over here. So that's just, that's how I math that. But now Australia though, I, I'm surprised it hasn't come out yet. Let's see, uh, uh, Gavin, oh, uh, I was thinking uh, May to August, but your explanation will do. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, uh, I like I said, before 2019, I really can't uh, speak on when they came out just because, uh, one, it's that's a while ago, and two, I wasn't very active during that time. But I know since uh past three or four years, they've come out between – uh, between late March and early July, somewhere around there. Let's see. Um, hey, there's Frank. Hey, Frank. Uh, very curious. What do you think Zippo should be releasing as lighter ideas to get more people interested in newer styles? Well, I think Zippo... That's a great question because Zippo has been doing a pretty good job at coming out with new designs uh, like the 540s. Let's see. Let me get some examples. Let's see. Here's the closest 540 I got to me. So this is a, a Blaisdell Foundation 540. Uh, and I think the 540 designs is probably one of their smartest move uh, when it comes to designs. That really, I know the 540 kind of sparked a lot of interest uh, from collectors, new newer collectors too. So the 540s are a good uh, good thing that Zippo can continue doing. Now, believe it or not, you know, we are a, as far as collectors go, we're a very small percentage of Zippo sales. Zippo, uh, Zippo right now, from what I understand, they get a lot of their, majority of their sales internationally. Uh, so we are a very small percentage of their sales. So, uh, I mean, they, but they still cater to the collector. They've come out, uh, like designs like this, I think will peak, uh, will peak collectors' interest. Those armored uh, people really like the armored designs, the multi-engraved, uh, the antique copper, antique silver finish designs. Those are always popular. Uh, being armored. So I think think if they just focus on their five forties coming out with cool engraved Zippos like that, uh, like the 2024 Collectible of the Year. Uh, now, if they do, what will really pique some interest if Zippo, if they really focus on some designs and come out with lighters like Full circle and the moon landing. Yeah, that had definitely piqued some interest. Uh, out of the more modern designs, these two are by far the best, in my opinion. Uh, they're my favorite. So, uh, is Australia and others from Bradford, Pennsylvania? Let's see. I haven't seen it on Zippo Australia site. Yeah, that's odd. Um, I'll, I'll pull up one of the Asian sites and see if, see if that one is on there. Uh, Thomas, not impressed with the Cody's. 
uh, exorbitant price, not exciting to me. Bring back etch and paint. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I want to expect less from you, Tom, as far as, uh, you know, not getting into the modern designs. I like the Cody's, though. I, I think, you know, you think 30, 40, you know, 50 years from now, uh, that will be something cool to, I think, have is all, all the Cody's from Zippo. Uh, I, I just see that being a big market 20, 30, 40 years from now. Uh, there we go. Uh, Asmin, uh, I'm from Malaysia and not, not here, uh, not released yet. Thanks. Yeah, that's, they're, they're not very consistent when it comes to dropping these regions. I know, uh, at least I know in the 90th, uh, they were really, you know, they came out with the Asian edition first. A month later, they came out with the European uh, and then a couple weeks later, they came out with the American version. So they they've not really known to come out all at the same time. But but yeah, Baz, I think uh, I think you're about right. It would not surprise me if that Cody that y'all uh, y'all probably have the Asian version. That one will probably, I mean, $400, uh, that would not surprise me. That's why I respect y'all, just because I know what y'all go through in order to uh, get those Zippos. So, Now, uh, Gavin, I, I want to go that far. I mean, just to, kind of as, a, as far as they want that money. Well, I mean, they're they're a business, you know. As a business person myself, that's why someone's in business. But I do think when it comes to those international prices, let, let me get my other Cody's here. When it comes to so here, this is the ninetieth uh, European. This is the uh, 90th Asian. Got that upside down in a box. And then got the 90th US, I think. I don't know. I get these two mixed up. I uh, think Black Ice was American. So that's the American. And then the Chrome was the European. Um, you know, I... I would say I I can't speak on if Zippo Zippo's pricing because you know we we don't know what all goes into we don't know the processes uh, especially when it comes to those overseas prices um, the 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 import fees the duty taxes uh, Zippos are considered hazardous in the UK and, you know, they're very hard to ship and move, uh, in the UK. So there's a lot of fees and overhead that goes in to pricing those lighters out now, you know, so I, I, I don't want to speculate too much how Zippo gets their prices cause I, we don't know. Uh, but is it expensive? Yeah, it, it's expensive, no doubt about that. But there's probably a good method to their madness when it comes to their pricing. You know, because they're, they're a business, they got to make money. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a method and a, a algorithm how they come up with their prices. So, And Tom, yeah, the Cody's do do appeal to the younger market. The reason, so the reason why I got into all the collectibles of the year is at the time when I started collecting in 2009, those were generally the most affordable Zippos. So I was 18 when I started collecting in 2008, 2009. And, you know, I got 
uh, Tony mentioned the uh, D Day. Uh, D Day. I got this one for twenty five dollars uh, back in two thousand and nine. Uh, I got, let's see, I got several other Zippos, like, uh, you know, they go for, you know, I got this one for about $10. You know, I mean, they, I got the 600 millionth when that one came out. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of my collection grew, or the, the only reason why I was able to collect back in 2009 when I was 18 uh, 18 and 19 was those were the cheapest Zippos. Uh, and, well, as far as collectible wise, cause you, the, uh, at the time, the, you know, all the vintage ones, they were still going for 70, a hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. And just as a teenager making, I think I was making like seven twenty five an hour. Um, you know, I, I just, that was all I could really afford. So that's why I I bought into the collectibles of the year, just because at the time they were the ones I could afford. So now, I don't know. Uh, Gavin, he, uh, he does have a good, uh, good comment here. Good question about, uh, I would think the lighter half cocked in the display, uh, would stress the cam. I don't think it has stressed the cam too much. I mean, cause I'm not feeling any tension. And then that, so there's a click. There's a click here. And so it's kind of just, it's not resting past that first click. So it's kind of just hanging there. Um, the way that they have it in the display. So it's kind of just hanging there. So I, I don't, I want to see if, you know, and also I think the, uh, how snug the fit is, uh, how snug it is, how snug it's fit in there. Uh, I, I don't see it stressing it out. I do, I do think this is one of their better box displays. I, they started that, they did that with the copper and then they did that with the 2023 collectible of the year. And I really, I really do like how they do that. The, whoever came up with that idea really, thought that one through. So I appreciate them at good bounce back from, there's a reason why these are in the normal boxes. Cause I absolutely do not like the boxes that the 90th Zippos came in. But yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point. I, I don't think it, I don't think it would compromise the integrity of the cam with it sitting in there like that. All right, Baz. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Baz. Really appreciate you uh, coming in. So uh, let's see, the uh, Asians also have their own limited Cody version. Uh, this year it's the Zippo Year of the Dragon. That one would be interesting to look at. Um, now is it, is that from a third party design or is that like you can go to the uh, any, you know, like uh, Zippo Malaysia and purchase that from their website? Let's see. Let me pull that up. Zippo Malaysia. Because I know like back in the mid 2000s, Europe had their own collectible of the years going on. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, they do. All right. Look at that. Thanks, Baz. 
You're my hero too. All right. Let's see. Well, where'd it go? Come back here. They're still selling the uh, uh, 90th Sterling on Zippo Malaysia. All right. So let's pull this up. So yeah, so we got... These are kind of interesting looking. The Year of the Dragon. This is the Asia Limited Edition. I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not sure what uh, currency, uh, how that comes out for uh, U.S. dollars. Not able to buy this uh, if you live in the U.S. anyway, but it's all, I always love to go to Zippo's uh, uh, international websites. So let's see. Uh, Year of the Dragon, limited to a thousand pieces. Let's look at this. So, yeah, I mean, it, now that's cool. I do like, how about that box? That's a pretty cool looking box. Comes with a little medallion. That looks really nice. 2023. So, is that 2020? Is that 2024 collectible of the year or 2023? So, cool box. There's the limited numbers on the side. So now they got that gold one there. Now we got the nickel finish. Now that's cool, having a nickel finish. No, I don't want to buy it. Let's see. All right. Nickel finish, kind of same design, just different. That is a neat-looking display box. I do like that. Let's see. I don't see a limited number on this. Uh, there it is. Is it limited to 1,002? So, yeah, li limited to 1,000. So they got the nickel finish. And then they got the uh, gold-plated finish. So that that's pretty cool uh, that they have their own additions. Uh, they probably have some cooler designs, too. Like I said, I... That's one thing I do love about just going on to the those international websites just to see designs that we may not have over here in the U.S. Uh, a lot of them look the same, uh, but usually once you get into the armored uh, armored ones, or can't really find those in the U.S. and, and also some five forty designs. And also, you'll see some older designs on here as well that uh, you can't get in the U.S. anymore. So, you know, like the Founders Day, I think they recently just took that off on the U.S. website. You still may get be able to get it, but but pretty cool. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, pretty cool to see. So Zen 71, uh, can I send to, uh, not quite sure where that is. Um, I, uh, I don't ship internationally or I try not to ship internationally. All right, Tom. Hey, take care. Thanks for stopping by. Asian Cody started with the Year of the Ox uh, and Year of the Tiger, Year of the Rabbit, now Year of the Dragon. The gold plated one in box is 183 on eBay. I don't think that's too bad. Uh, I you know not not for me, but that's hey if you're into that, that's 183s kind of sounds like it's in that ballpark. Better than spending, you know, $300 on the European 
2024 collectible of the year. But let's see. Now, I got to be careful because I have a bad habit of getting all these lighters out and then, you know, not putting them back where they belong. And so you see my display over there is getting a little thin. So I'm going to, so I'll put these back. to text somebody earlier to let them know I was on. Well, let's see, what else? What else? Y'all been, I uh, appreciate everyone being interactive. It helps this go on a lot easier. But talking to myself comes natural anyway, so... Let's see. Let me message him real quick. Well, what what else? So we we've talked about collectibles of the year. I uh, I still have not come out with this video yet. I did a video a couple months ago. I just haven't had time to break it down and edit it. But I I went on Temu or Timu, however you want to pronounce it, and got a couple displays. Uh, and I got this for, uh, I picked up a display for my Facebook editions and I really, really like that, uh, display. So that, that's something that I'm trying to work on is, uh, getting a couple more videos out there for y'all. Um, let's see, let me message him real quick. All right, he, uh, the one I just sent a message to sent me this awesome care package for those that uh, have come in after I talked about this. Uh, had a subscriber send me a second care package, sent me this awesome Tennessee Titans flag. I'm a Tennessee Titans fan. You can see my Zippos over there. Tennessee Titans Zippos. He sent me this executive diary. I really like the cover of this one. Sent me this awesome... 100th anniversary, uh, 111 out of 150, Bradford Fire Department. So that's real. I've always loved to get things from Bradford. And then kind of my favorite thing in that care package, this cool little out-of-the-front knife, legal in Mississippi. So don't worry about that. All right. What was I doing? Uh, I think I saw Frank, Frank asked for the 2024 catalog. My thoughts on that. And I, I really haven't spent too much time looking at that, but I, I have looked at it. Let's see. Let me pull up the actual catalog itself. Unfortunately, I, usually with my job, uh, I go to trade shows, and Zippo usually has a booth. And the past couple times, I've been able to get a hard copy of their catalog and uh, I just haven't been to a trade show this year, so I don't know if Zippo's been there or if uh, you know my uh, the my colleagues usually bring me back a catalog if um, if they do see one, but they uh, haven't gotten a hard copy of the 2024 catalog this year yet. I'm trying to pull it up on my phone here. That way we can see some uh, some of the 2024 designs. Let's see. Zippo for catalog. All right. Here, we'll go on an exterior website. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can't pull it up. Zippo Catalogs, I don't think, has it on there. There we go, Zippo UK. Can't pull it up on the... All right. 
There we go. All right, so we got the 2024 collectible. This is the uh, UK catalog, by the way. But I think they do have some designs. All right. This, so being a large flame, I love this one. I don't think I'm going to... Uh, I haven't bought any new designs this year so far. So this is a new design. That's... This is one of the first 540s that came out in like 2019. Same with that one. Uh, let's see. I have this woodchuck there, that flame. These are cool. Kind of some emblems. Nice to see. I, I'm, I do like the emblems. I, I know some people don't necessarily like those, but I do like emblems. Uh, let's see. Here's some Venetians. Goes with a Cody. These are all new, it looks like. Like I said, I don't know if they are uh, exclusive to Europe or not. This is uh, from the European 2024 catalog. That's a, a good, good theme if you're into Zodiac and stars, constellations. It's pretty cool. Some more cool 540s. That's a new design. Couple new designs here. See that uh, when I was talking about uh, multi cut, multi engraved, folks love these designs. I mean, they uh, they sell out pretty quick. Uh, here in the U.S. at least. I, I know if there's a really good multi-armored engraving like that, it goes pretty fast. Let's see. There is a really, really neat flame that came out this year. I'm trying to see. Some cool, uh, cool 540 there. Oh, that one's... That one's cool. See, that that's one thing I like about the 540s. If you got like four or five of them, you can make the whole design come to life. But that's a very expensive, very expensive route. So here's some neat 540s. I don't see that flat or that uh, Zippo flame that I like. Here's some cartoon looking 540s. I think 540s right now are the hot ticket item. They've been for the past couple years. So I think Zippo can just keep doing that for a little bit. Also, the uh, 540 fusions are really nice too. Like that dragon, that is slick. I really do like that design. These are cool too. I like the little marble 540s. I don't see my... My flame that I like. I guess it didn't come out in uh, Europe. So, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll see if I can pull up the. Uh, so yeah, that's the UK catalog. Let me see if I can pull up that the uh, American catalog on that. Let me catch up with some of these comments real quick. Um, got my Cody twenty four US version for one hundred ten eBay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a good price uh, for the U.S. version. It's lower than what they're allowed to sell them for, though. But that's uh, that's a good deal. So hey, Neil. So Neil, what's up, man? Uh, we just kind of been going. I've been showing off uh, the care package that I got from a subscriber. I think you know him well. Uh, talking about my awesome Tennessee Titans flag. Got some cool pliers. Got the uh, really nice... Yeah, one. Uh, thank you, Frank. $127.50 is the lowest a retailer can advertise their Zippos for. Uh, if, they, if they advertise lower than $127.50... Uh, they can get in some trouble with Zippo Legal. I know that.
for a fact. Uh, now, like I said, that's advertised. Whatever they do behind, you know, under the table or not, you know, that's between them and the person they're selling to, which I see no problem with. So good, like, like I said, that was a good deal you got on uh, on that Cody. So that that's good to know that if uh, for that seller you can offer one ten and it looks like he'll take it. Uh, and then also I've been showing off my little favorite knife. I've carried this with me all day today. And that is so cool. I do need to sharpen it up a little bit. It's a little dull, but uh, it is so cool. I love this. Uh, I have a couple uh, uh, out of the front knives, but I don't know, for some reason, this one is just really neat. I, it's so smooth too. So yeah, I've been showing that off tonight, Neil, so. Let's see. Let me catch up with these. Uh... But yeah, like I said, uh, uh, the retailers, when it comes to reselling these Zippos, they have to be careful. They can't undercut the market too much. Zippo does not like that because Zippo is selling these for a 150 on the U.S. website. Uh, but retailer, you know, what would, I guess that's about 25%. 20, you know, 20% less than what Zippo's selling it for. So, yeah, what, what would that be? 150. So, uh, that's about 17%, I think. Uh, let's see, 120 minus... Fifteen. Uh, let's see, 150, 115, 22, 15. So yeah, so that would be, uh, I think Zippo, that would be about 15% less than what Zippo sells it for. Uh, as far as being advertised, 15% uh, sounds about right. I think it may vary depending on the design, but I know Zippo, when it comes to some high market items uh usually it's between 15 and 20 percent that retailers can sell less than retail va or retail market value let's see All right, let's see. I mean, I'm writing out a message real quick. So what else? Uh, let's see. All right, what else? We've talked about Cody's. Usually that seems uh, seems like all I talk about now. What else? Uh, I've been, finally got to clean some Zippos lately. So they've been, uh, they've been, I cleaned them about a week or so ago and uh, haven't had a chance to put them together yet. I did get uh I did get this gifted to me. This is a neat one. Uh, I have a Mississippi, let me get that one. That's a good one to talk about. All right. Let's see. Mm. 
And then, uh, Frank, I'll talk about Temu here in a second because I did get some cool stuff from them. Uh, but I, uh, I finally, I've been on the search. So I got this about a year ago and had it repainted. This is a Mississippi State Bulldogs. I collect Mississippi Zippos. This is a 69, very, very sought after design. Uh, all collegiate type of uh, Zippos from this era are very, uh, they're really, really uh, high, in high demand and can go for a pretty penny. But I've been looking for an Ole Miss one to kind of complete the rivalry, so to say. You know, if you're not familiar with Mississippi, uh, Mississippi colleges, Ole Miss and Mississippi State are the biggest rivalries in the state, uh, if not in the nation. I mean, they are, that is a huge rivalry. So it was really, really neat to get both of, uh, both of those in. So... Uh, I had a friend send this to me, kind of gift it to me. So that was nice on him. Uh, so Temu, I mentioned Temu or Timu, however you want to say it earlier. Uh, I was up late one night and uh, it came up on my app and I just pulled it up and uh, I saw some, they were selling some of these displays and, you know, they've, I don't recommend buying off Temu. I mean, it's kind of cheap, and uh, but I got this display here. That's a nice display. Uh, I got several acrylic stands. Let's see, what else I get? I got these stands over here that my collectible of the years are on, those wooden ones. I got those. Uh, I got this display stand. I really like it for my uh, my. Facebook series. I think it really works well with that. Uh, let's see. Got some other uh, stands and stuff from Tamu, but I, I'm not big on buying things from overseas like that, but I just wanted to try it out. Uh, but it does, it does elevate the collection a little bit. If you get a lot of these things, you know, they came out to be about 6 to $10 a piece. Uh, anything with a lock? Uh, maybe. I, I didn't get that too deep into it. Uh, Tamu's app is kind of not very user-friendly when it comes to searching for things like that. Because once you get... I found that once I got onto something, it really only, uh, it only gave me things that were similar. So I didn't see anything with a lock per se. But um, uh, talking to Neil, Neil actually found some good things like that on Amazon for about the same price. So maybe you uh, may be looking on Amazon for displays like that. You'll probably find some better displays with locks on Amazon uh, that would be a good place to start, Amazon or eBay. When it comes to my displays with locks on it, uh, most of those are Zippo. I do have a, uh, let's say, jewelry display over here. That works very well with Zippos. Kind of a little tight, but still, it's one of my, my favorite displays that I have. That locks. All my Zippo ones lock. I have this cherry wood display here. This one has a key. It has a lock, but I haven't figured out how it locks. <laughs> so I try to figure out how it locks, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't. Did that get it? Nope. Yep. See, I'm I'm still trying to figure out how this one locks now when i say i'm still trying it's like i've never tried it before so uh oh that didn't sound good yeah i don't know it has a key it has a lock i just don't know how it gets it to lock uh but i got this cherry wood display from a collection so I bought about 60 Zippos, and that came with it. So, 
Let's see. Going back on some of the where my comment phone go in my pocket. Fingernail polish display stands on Amazon. Not sure if any will have locks. Yeah. Um, the only things on Amazon that I think could come with a lock uh, would be kind of displays like this, like this one. You know, not saying that they're Zippo or anything, uh, but they will be kind of the acrylic, the semi tall acrylic stands um, that you can maybe put maybe 10 lighters in them with a stand or something like that. Um, I would just look up acrylic display. That's usually, uh, but some are, you know, you can probably get some on eBay for between 40 and $60. I got a couple acrylic stands coming in um, from my job. My job, uh, I have... Uh, a couple stores shut down and they had a few just acrylic display stands that they put like knives and stuff in. Uh, and so they were going to throw them away, but I told them, Hey, send them, send them to me. And so I'll be getting a couple more, uh, acrylic displays. Let's see how many lighters do, uh, do I think I own or how many, let's see how many, now that's a, how many I own versus how many that are in my collection. That is a different answer. So I think I got a, maybe around 500 in my collection. Um, like I said, not about quantity. Uh, the ones that are in my collection are Zippos that I really like uh, or have some sort of a uh, sentimental theme or value to. Uh, like my large flames, my NASCAR. Got some of my Bradford Zippos here, that fire department one. I got to figure out where to put that one in here. That one's a really good one. I, I do like that fire department one that uh, I got in a care package. Got some vintage ones here. Got my collectible of the years. Just got some nice series down here. Um, terrible, uh, that's a terrible YouTube artist series that they did. Um, some zip lights. I got a lot of these in here are just gifts that I've gotten over the years. Got some luxury designs in here. Some early 2000 designs. This one, all right, I can't tell y'all about this one because it will go against a, uh, not a, uh, uh, what's it called? An NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, and it could get some people fired. So I can't tell you about this Zippo. Uh, true story, true story. I can't, that's, this Zippo has an NDA on it. So I can't tell you anything about that Zippo, except that I can't tell you anything about that Zippo. <laughs> So I'll get it out. It, it, it's a fascinating story. I need to write it down. Uh, that way, you know, 20 years from now when it won't, won't matter. So it looks like it's been used. It looks, you know, just kind of discolored. But there's a reason behind that. Like I said, I can't get into that reasoning. But yeah, it's there. there's something that was done to this lighter that makes it look like that. I just can't tell you what that is. Because I don't want the person that gave it to me to get in trouble. Uh, sorry to get those things back in this display. There we go. So yeah, I got some early... 2000 designs, some uh, just nice luxury designs. I got a prototype here. 
Let's see. Got some more collectibles of the year here. Got anniversary editions up there. Got the Reinspired series here. I don't have that last one. I just I figured I didn't have uh have enough space for it, so I wouldn't bother. Got just some random cases here. There's Turd Ferguson. Hello, Burt Reynolds. Glad to see you here. Let's see, my first Zippo. I actually, that is a great question. So here uh, I got, got kind of my uh, military theme, U.S. theme here. My grandpa, his, uh, I recently cleaned out his, the, when I first cleaned his Zippo, uh, I got my grandpa's Zippo back in 2012. And when I first cleaned it, I didn't really know how to clean Zippo as well. And so when I opened it up not too long ago, it was kind of started to rust from when I botched up the cleaning. And so I uh, re-cleaned it recently. So got some more Zippos here. My first Zippo, let's see. Let me get my tripod extended here. There's Jim, Jim Ken. Hey man, glad to see you can make it. Enjoy your dinner while you watch. We, uh, let's see. <laughs> the last re-inspired series was your favorite. I, uh, on a, it, the timing that it was dropped just didn't really work for me. That's kind of when I uh, started to back off purchasing new Zippos like that. Uh, let's see. My first Zippo, which I probably need to frame it. You know, I'm probably to the point where I can frame it. But I, I know exactly what my first three Zippos are. Uh, so... Let's see, is this one it? Okay, we got this one, this one, and this one. All right, so I got my first three Zippos. Let's see, all right, so my first Zippo was just this basic diagonal chrome. And I bought it in the mall. It's uh, It was like 12 bucks. 2009, that's when I started collecting. So it, it looks brand new, but I've cleaned it. I've, I may have changed out the insert in it too. So, but that's uh, my first Zippo. And then uh, paychecks started coming in, and I saw this one. This was about $30. I'm like, wow, that's a really slick-looking Zippo. That's going to be my uh, nice Zippo when I go out. So, like, if I went out on a date or whatever, I would have this Zippo just because it looked nicer. And then I saw this one. And this one at the time was like maybe $35. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't buy them off of eBay at that time. I just walking through the mall, saw a design I liked and wanted to get it. And so this one is a 2009 as well. So uh, got this one and uh, I started carrying around this for a little bit. And then... Kind of my fourth and final Zippo that I got um, to carry around with me was this one right here. Got this one in 2009. And uh, this has been my everyday carry since. And so all the first three Zippos that I just showed you started my collection. And so now, after starting those three Zippos... We are here. So that's kind of my uh, 
I've shared that story a few times on here, but that is my kind of how I started my collecting. Is it all started in 2009? Uh, and like I said, I do have my grandpa's Zippo, but I didn't get that one till uh, 2012. So he passed in 2007. And we didn't find his Zippo till 2012. So that was kind of a, that's kind of a cool story in itself. So, so yeah, great, great question. Hope that gave you a little insight on my, uh, my collecting story. Let's see. My first two Zippos from 96 and 97 are still on my carry rotation. Nice. Hey, I really love stories of folks that say uh, that they still had their Zippos from the, you know, 60s or 70s. And, you know, that's just, that just goes to show what great of a company Zippo is and how well their products are. Because uh, the most of my vintage ones I have are in my Mississippi collection. Uh, I would say this one is my kind of one of my holy grails. Just uh, you know, and not not necessarily because of the box. Yes, that you know, but the design, a Cadillac. Having a Cadillac design like this is very well sought after. Let's see, but uh, but yeah, like when when it comes to, I got a uh, Mississippi Zippo right now getting restored in Texas, but uh, I got I got some good Mississippi designs there for vintage. Got some five forties here. So yeah, great question. Thanks for uh, asking. Those Frank. Um, so Neil asked um, Neil when we were talking the other day. I think I think you got this one for a pretty good deal. This was the twenty uh, fifth Zippo case. Zippo. It's a five forty. Kind of a dark, cloudy design. Not a too big of a fan, but uh, they did come with gold plated. Zippo, um, this one's limited to a hundred. This is uh, one of the lowest numbers you can get. This is 007 out of 100. Like the first, the first few go to uh, the family. So like the first three or something goes to the family. So getting one zero 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 seven was kind of cool on that one. Uh, and then also they had this. Combo. Oh, there goes everything. I make a mess when I do these lives. Uh, then uh, you have this combo set. I got this one signed by George Duke. Uh, TSA did a great job to dent it when I was flying back. But uh, got that one. Got that 10 signed. Uh, these came out, I think this was like... 40 when it came out. This one might have been one, 120, 125. Uh, and then the ninth Zippo, I think was like 150. So, but I, uh, I got a couple, uh, you know, I, I got a couple extra. So I was able to share those with a few friends. <laughs> So yeah, I, I know Neil had uh, Neil talked about the 540. So I meant to show him the uh, limited and the knife edition of that one. Uh, and then also, Frank, you asked how many Zippos. I said I got about 500 in my main collection, but I do have about um, I got about 200 or so that uh, I kind of are just. That's kind of in my inventory that I'm trying to sell out. So the it's kind of my sell area here. 
I, I'm not very good at listing. I'm not very good at uh, selling them, but that's that's the intent. The intent is to sell these, and there's about 200 here. So it doesn't look like that, but there is. Let's see. And then I got, got a... My workstation here is a little messy right now. Yeah, the uh, so I will say this gold plated one. This is a really I I do I do like this one. Uh, just the gold plated, uh, the way the design is, the back. Says uh, it's hard. Glare's hard since its grand opening in Bradford in 1997. The Case Museum welcomes thousands of collections who visit and experience the rich history, true American icons, Zippo and Zippo Case. And at this event, they showed details to renovate the Case Museum, uh, and so it was supposed to get renovated and open last year. But I talked to the uh, the manager of the Zippo case, and unfortunately, they, due to some uh, budget cuts, they weren't able to. Uh, they they weren't able to move forward with those renovations just yet. So hopefully, they haven't scrapped that project completely. I just know they're not renovating the Case Museum as originally planned. Uh, speaking of, that's the twenty. 5th anniversary. I do have, I do like this. So this is uh, from the 1997 grand opening. And it's a really nice, cool display book. Thousand sets were made. You got the, uh, the knife and then the Zippo. And uh, if you're wondering what these little pieces of paper are, this is how I catalog on my Zippos. Uh, I catalog them in Excel and PowerPoint, and then I just stick a sl the sliver of paper here. Uh, that way, if something happens to me, God forbid, trying to hunt these Zippos down won't be... It'll be a, a challenge, but it won't be as a as hard of a challenge for those that are trying to clean up this mess that I've created. So that's uh, I'm about halfway done when it comes to cataloging my Zippos uh, with these cards here, but that's kind of just a work in progress. So no matter how big your collection is, I just can't stress enough how important it is to catalog your Zippos because it's a lot harder when you get too big. So let me retract my tripod here again. I'm going to sit back down. Good questions. I, I really appreciate everybody's effort to participate. It does make this go a little easier. So I'm happy to answer any questions about Zippo or collecting. Let me get back in my little spot here. And also just to, let's see, any Santa Claus lighters? I got a couple in my... I got one, I think. I got one in my cell file here. It is a zip light, I believe. So I got, this is a zip light. Yeah. Good condition. Excellent condition, actually, for high polished 2001. This is about a, uh, I got to check the market, but uh, right now I think zip lights like this are going for about maybe 40. So here's another, this is just a season greetings. 
for this one. You know, probably, I think the market's probably about 30 on this one. I got to double check, though. I think that's it on the Santa Claus one. I've had a few of them before. But Santa ones sell pretty good or sell pretty quick. Uh, there, There's a lot of people who have uh, Christmas themes. So that's a cool theme to have. So here's a uh, one of my favorite ones, not of Santa, uh, but uh, let's see, let's loosen this up a little bit. All right. Oh, sorry. Trying to fix my tripod here. Is uh, so this is a Blaisdell Foundation Zippo. I I'm getting the 2024 one in. Hopefully. Uh, but this is George Duke, uh, and when I was at the uh, at Zippo at, in Bradford this past year, he was uh, had him sign this Zippo for me, because that's his face on the front, and then had him sign the back, and also had him sign the front of the box. So that's pretty cool when uh, you can get them to sign Zippos like that. I appreciate them in uh, doing that for us. Let's see. Tony, uh, let's see. I skipped some uh, comments here. Bobby Joe, he still has his first one. 88 engine turned. Only carry it for Bradford show. Well, I won't be able to see it this year, so I apologize on that, Bobby. Already talked that uh, I won't be able to go to Bradford this year, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, ho hopefully next year we can do something about that. Won't be able to go to Lighter Palooza 4.5 either because I'll be in Orlando. Uh, Lighter Palooza usually does two events. Uh, they do one in the spring slash summer, uh, July-ish. And then one in the fall in October, and uh, I'll be in Orlando in October. So, another uh, thing that I added recently is uh, I love Star Trek. So Star Trek is uh, not not a lot of Star Trek Zippos out there, but uh, I got this from Hallmark. Retails like uh, retail for this was like a hundred and thirty dollars, something ridiculous. Uh, it lights up, it's cool, but uh, I uh, when I went in, they had this thing for ninety percent off. So, you know, whatever 130, 130 and 90% is, is what I got it for. So I was like, heck yeah, that would look awesome with my Star Trek Zippos. So, but I also, I already have some uh, uh, models of Enterprise anyway, but I love, uh, love displaying. That's one thing I always tell folks is if you have a theme, Find some things to display with it. That's uh, kind of compliments that. Favorite Cody. I kind of brought him out earlier. Is uh, I did I did a video on ranking collectibles of the year. Uh, I forget which one I said was number one, but it's definitely between Full Circle. I would say number one is the Moon Landing. Which right now, I mean, the market's crazy on these. I've sold, you can probably find a collector to sell you one between 250 and 300 But like on eBay, they, they're asking like 500 600 on eBay, which is absurd. But uh, yeah, I would say Moon Landing 
It's my favorite collectible of the year. And then Full Circle is a close is a close second or a tie for first. You know, just awesome. You know, this one you can get probably from a collector around four hundred. Uh, and then on eBay, they're asking five, six hundred for it. So, and the market, the market's down right now. So this is a buyer's market. So if you're looking for Zippos, it might be a good time to buy designs like this because the market is uh, market's down. Now, a lot of people are sitting on Zippos. So that is, um, a lot of people are sitting on their Zippos hoping the market goes up. But right now, like I, I've sold three or four of these just from collection. You know, I've acquired a good bit of these, three or four, just through collections throughout the past couple year, years. And I always try to sell to collectors. Uh, and I usually sell, you know, I think 250 is a fair price for this Zippo for a collector. Uh, now, if it was going overseas or anywhere else, I may try to get you know a little bit more out of that one. But I always try to do a service to collectors, just because it's uh, uh, the right thing to do. I would want them to do the same thing for me. So, yeah, those are my two favorite. Uh, a close, uh, I guess, my third best favorite one is Mysteries of the Forest just because it was one of the first mosaics, if not the first mosaic that they did. So that that that's that's a good one that I like as well. All right, Baba Joe, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you later. Um, yeah, so Frank, uh, I fully agree with Jen Kim on that one. Um, so COVID came, I got back into Zippos right around when COVID started, uh, because I had the money to do so with, you know, all the extra money that was in the economy that was floating around Zippo collecting Zippo market. I mean, it, and it went up, it inflated, um, it was a great time to buy, great time to sell. Uh, if a Zippo was a hundred dollars, you're like, whatever, let's go for it. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a high collector market, uh, between I'd say late 2019 and, uh, all the way up to kind of early last year is when it really started slowing down. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, COVID really created that inflated demand as Jen, uh, reading Jen Kim's comment here, COVID created inflated demand for most collectibles. Uh, I know this one tracking magic, the gathering cards and Lego sets and Pokemon, Pokemon soared during COVID too. Uh, so yeah, it, it's going down. The market's down right now because of the economy, uh, because of inflation, it's down. And, you know, not to get political or anything, uh, I, I'm hoping that things may take a turn in November, uh, or at least uh, you'll start to see the beginning of the economy kind of balancing back out uh, in November for, for the better. So hopefully at the turn of the next year, the market might go up kind of a uh, balance out a little bit. Cause it, I don't think it in the next year or two, I don't think it will be as good as it was during COVID. Just, uh, I think that was just a rare, uh, once in a lifetime, rare thing. I think it will take maybe a decade for prices to get back to where they were. <laughs> uh, just how the, just how, how the collectible market works. I mean, it's just up and down, but right now it's down, it's down, down. I mean, 
there were, uh, I've seen some Zippos. Like, for example, and a lot of it, a lot of it goes back to the Chinese market too. So the market, the Zippo market relies on eBay. That's a fact. Uh, and eBay has a huge, ma uh, huge following of overseas buyers. So as a seller of eBay, what probably about 95% of my eBay sales went to freight forwarders in Delaware, Oregon, Washington State. Uh, and so all the Zippos I was selling were going overseas. And so the uh, all those overseas buyers, they were jacking up the market just for the demand. Uh, and so they've stopped purchasing a lot of kind of the high price designs. And so when they stopped purchasing a lot of those designs, well, where do we get our market value from? sold eBay listings. So when they stop purchasing or buying those Zippos at those inflated prices, that's where you start to see that market go down because here we are trying to figure out the value of Zippos. We rely on eBay sold listings. And so when we see eBay sold listings are down, well, we're not going, you know, we're going to sell under or around eBay sold listings. So for example, this Marlboro Cowboy 2002, I sold probably about 10 of these between 80 and $100 on a good day, on a good day, um, between 80 and $100. I would sell this to collectors around $60, 60 to $75, depending on the day, right? Um, now, I think this on eBay is going between 50 and 60. So it is super down on eBay. Uh, people are still trying to get 80 for it, but I don't think you're going to get 80 for it in this market. If you want to sell fast, you can probably sell it for 50 pretty quick. Uh, but I mean, that's just how the market is right now. If all that makes sense. I know it's a lot of words. Let's see. Trying to think of some other, you know, like, uh, no, that's not a good example. A lot of the flame Zippos I bought in 2022, I bought some of those at a premium. Uh, I really did. I uh, bought some of those at a premium. A lot of those came from Europe. Right now, you know, don't tell my wife this, but I probably wouldn't get my money back on a lot of those Zippos. Um, so, at least in this market. But, you know, I would make that money up for a lot of some of the collectibles that I have bought. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, maybe Zippo needs to offer a lower price collectible. I mean, that, I, I don't get into what Zippo sells their Zippos for just because I don't know what goes into it. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm familiar with the process, but as far as their overhead, as far as their cost of goods... I know they rely on the market for their steel and for their brass, so I can't comment on why they why their prices are why what they are. Do I think their collectibles would be more desirable if they were cheaper? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, like if they were eighty dollars, sixty dollars, I think people would buy them up. Uh, I know the uh, moon landing Zippo. 2019, that sold for retail $80. Now it's selling for $250 uh, plus, you know, some may, maybe higher, a lot higher. 
But, um, you know, maybe that's why Zippo is, you know, they see, well, dang, we sold that for 80 and people are now buying that for 200 plus. We need to get in on that. So maybe there's a little bit of that going on too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Jen Ken, uh, I mentioned this earlier uh, when Tony said, hey, good looking display. Ten years ago, I bought this Zippo for $25. Uh, I, uh, when it came to Tom saying that collectible of the years were for younger collectors, yeah. I bought most of my collectibles of the year back in 2009 for $30, $40 max uh last so 2021 i saw this pop on ebay for a hundred dollars so i bought it uh, uh this whole thing so lighter display for a hundred dollars that one that i bought in 2009 i sold that the one i bought for 25 dollars. i went and listed that on ebay once i bought this whole set I listed that one on eBay for 115 And so I got 115 for that one, but I only spent $100 on this entire set. Uh, now, right now, these are going for about 50 bucks, if that, you know, between 40 and 50 So, yeah, that, that one's a good example. Uh, same with some of the other collectibles of the year, like Joan. Uh, I think the highest that one got was about 70, 75. Now that one's down to 30 or 40. You know, and the uh, Keeper of the Flame, that one's down. That one was selling for 150 at one time. I sold one for 150 in 2022. That one's selling for about 90 right now. Uh, so, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, collectibles of the year are a good range for the market because sometimes they'll go for markets, they'll be up 100, and then they'll go down to 60. Then they'll go, you know, they they always fluctuate. But yeah, that's a good, good, uh, good point, Jen. Uh, let's see. Yeah, to, uh, we, yeah, Tony, we were, uh, Tony and I were talking about D-Day one, uh, earlier this sec session. Let's see. Uh, let's see, a decade, I won't be there. Uh, hey, if, uh, if you need to offload any collections, you know, jrolites at gmail.com. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, let's see. Now, any success selling on Amazon? I, I don't know how to get into Amazon selling. Um, that you can find a lot of different uh, designs on Amazon. You'll still be paying retail price. I know, uh, thankfully, so when I started, when I got back into collecting, uh, it was about 2019, I got a lot of my, I caught back up on my collectibles of the year. Uh, I think I stopped at, uh, in 2015, I stopped getting collectibles of the year. Uh, which I'm glad I got this one when it came out. This one was, I think, like $40 retail when it came out. It was like $40 or $50 retail um, when that came out. I remember that one because I was like, yes, I can afford it. Uh, so, yeah, that one, uh, when that came out, I bought that one because it was so cool. But then I don't, I think I I didn't get this one. Um whatever 2017 was, the uh, 85th. I think I had caught back up on that one. I caught back up on this one. I got this one for like 125. Um, I got that one for 125 on Amazon. Now this one's going for like 250, I think. Um, 
this one, um, I caught back up on that one. I wasn't a fan of it, but it came out, I think, right when I started collecting again. So, yeah, there's... Um, where was I going with that? I forget where I was going with that, but... But yeah, I, I did in 2019, I got I did a lot of catching up uh with some of the Cody's and um kind of just collecting in general. 2019 I had about 200 Zippos. In 2021, I think I doubled my collection. So uh yeah, that kind of all goes back to COVID and having that extra money and economy was great during covid for at, at least for me so but now i'm kind of slowing off i'm sitting on a lot of designs hoping for that market to creep back up a little bit but i think that will uh, i think that will start hopefully happening early next year so not not getting into uh, any politics or anything, but I do believe hopefully we'll see a change in the next year when it comes to the market and the economy kind of getting better than what it is currently. So, but yeah, I hope that sheds a light on the market. I know it's a lot of words, so hopefully it uh hopefully what I was saying makes sense. And uh I do so one uh, I do enjoy having Jen uh Jen Kim in here because he he's a really good sound or a very good voice of reason when it comes to Zippos and Zippo market. He's very uh very smart and wise when it comes to topics like this uh, and he can definitely uh, explain some things better than I can so I appreciate uh, he always comments on my videos uh, very good information very detailed information and I'm always open for constructive criticism uh, when it's delivered properly and he knows how to do it so I really really greatly appreciate his insight uh, in, on some of these topics Now, there are some out there who think that they know a lot, but they just come across very arrogant. So I I kind of set them aside, and uh, I don't appreciate their uh, constructive criticism. But there are some out there, uh, you know, like Zippo Rob Johnson. He's awesome. Bill, um, you know, there, there's some really great collectors out there that know... Uh, they they just know, they they know how it all works. So that's why I always advocate for Zippo Facebook groups. Uh, you meet a lot of great people uh, out there when it comes to information. Uh, Tony started with twelve Zippos in twenty thirteen. Now he has around seventy five. And I I'm glad I've been able to contribute to your collection, Tony. That's awesome. Uh, really, uh, I met Tony and Bradford last year, so that was uh, really great, really awesome. Uh, I think think he uh, he emailed me at first, and then uh, it wasn't till Bradford till I was able to get a uh, match the face to the name. So that was uh, really cool. As I said, unfortunately, I won't be able to see you this year, Tony. But hopefully, next year we can figure something out. But. Uh, well, it's uh, it's getting late for me. It's almost, uh, it's about 1030 now. I'm thirsty. I need to go get me something to drink, get a snack. Uh, I, I didn't plan on going this long. It's been about two hours now. But uh, I appreciate all of y'all stopping in. We've had about 10 people consistently in here. So that's, uh, I appreciate everyone commenting, uh, participating, I'm used to talking to myself, but it really helps to talk with others. Uh, so I greatly appreciate it. 
Feel free to uh, feel free to email me, jrolites at gmail.com. Feel free to message me on Facebook. Uh, love to chat with you. Love to talk to you. And with that, this is Jro Lights. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, and uh, Jen Kim, he's going to be at Lighter Police. Oh, man. Oh, well. Hopefully next year we'll see you, Jen. All right. Peace out, y'all.